So in the interest of uh, time, perhaps we could uh, go ahead and proceed. We want to thank our guest. The Comptroller's Office has been kind enough to lend us uh, the expertise of one of their own, and we certainly appreciate all that hard work. Um, I know Andrew has been having a lot of the discussions as well, and perhaps, did you have anything you'd like to add before we get started, Andrew? No, I was very thankful that Andrew was here and walked us through the process. I was delighted to be here with you and Andrew and his team. And the only um, thing we might note there at the end or what have you is former government um, alternatives that allow some options ruled in and some ruled out, the at-large question, things of that nature. So what's before you is with the premise what's allowed versus what's not allowed. So having said that, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Matthew. And well, thank you. Can, is my mic on or do I need to? Uh, the little green light, uh, Tyler's coming to check it, it out. On. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Well, thank you all for inviting me and having me um, out. I'm just actually just live right up the road at 840 right off the, um, in Rutherford County out there by the um, the castle there. So I touched a little bit of, talked a little bit with Andrew and got with Tyler to get some accurate city boundaries here. But um come here really today to kind of talk to you all about the redistricting, redistricting um, here in Thompson Station. It sounds like um, kind of getting some more information that I'm collecting from you all as well. It sounds like there is talk of going to four council districts or four wards and also um, or some kind of combination of that. So really, really when you're in redistricting, this is probably the best way to really explain it is you're really just trying to, to divide your city, in this case, Thompson Station, up into equal representation. So the makeup of that count, the, of the districts and the wards will kind of determine that ideal population that we'll use. Um, with that, I just really kind of need to know what the numbers you all are thinking about, and then from there, or answer any questions that you may or may not have. It's a little bit different. I mean, you, you do have to still be compact, contiguous with the, you do have to follow with the, the state law, but really on the city side, you do have a little bit more, um, uh, I, I don't want to say leeway, but you do have some leeway in, de in designing your wars. Well, I, I would say that the um, meeting tonight, I think, probably should be with the give and take with the board. I, I say that because this is purely a, um, a policy decision. As an administrator, often I have some thoughts and Way in, but in this respect, I really don't because it's uh, such a policy laden um, decision, philosophically and otherwise. I can say Nolansville has twice their population, and roughly in terms of the complexion of the board, not really a lot of difference. There are other places that, uh, you know, again, with the formal government option. You know, by charter, they may have at large, which I didn't agenda. So, you know, really, given what we're working with, I guess it's really the druthers of these gentlemen, and philosophically, and ultimately all five of them, how they, they view it as a matter of representation. Uh, so, I don't really have any matter of how these, these guys uh, see and feel. I, I guess the only thing I'll add that was helpful when Matthew and I talked uh, before, you know, keep in mind this is not required, it's encouraged. Um, you can create two wards, you can create four wards, um, you can go beyond that, but I think there's probably a concern with the size of Thompson Station. Uh, going to something like six or eight. Um, there are limitations like Matthew was talking about, and, and Matthew, you may want to get into those numbers of your, you want to keep neighborhoods intact if you can, but the size matters. 
So, for example, I think the first thing that, uh, Matthew, you pointed out that basically Tollgate, given the 2020 census numbers, is effectively almost a perfect ward if you did four. It's right at that one-fourth number. Um, there's a couple of pieces of property. I think in the packet, Alderman, that you got tonight, you saw just sort of, it was a work product that Matthew and I worked on uh, of, hey, what is a possibility for four wards? And you can kind of see ward two on there is Tollgate and a couple pieces of property to the east. And those numbers, by the way, if you're looking at that or the other document that was provided, those are, Matthew, correct me if I'm wrong, those are the census blocks. So you can't, you absolutely cannot divide those up. Those are blocks that have to be placed somewhere. So you can see kind of below uh, the number two in, in the ward where Tollgate is, there's 914. That's a block. That, that's got to go somewhere. Off to the east is a 21. That's another block that has to be put somewhere. So there's a lot of leeway in where you draw the lines, but some of these larger population centers are going to have to be separated out. Um, you'll notice probably the most consequential um, thing from what Matthew uh, and I put together was, and I think, back me up if I'm right, Matthew, Canterbury's too big to be kept as one. So we were just trying to toy with the idea of how do you split it? And I think there's a number of ways to do that. This happened to take a 707 block that you see um, uh, as the western section of Canterbury and put it with effectively the western part of town. I think the western part of town had 500 and some odd people in it, Matthew? Correct. Yeah, so, and, you, and we're looking for 1,800-ish per ward? 1821. 1821. So, you know, the western section by itself couldn't be a ward. You have to put it with other things. Um, so th the way Matthew went through that with me was very helpful. So I'll, I'll, I'll shut up now and let him talk to you. But that, that's where we're coming from. And this meeting right now, the last agenda item is the committee, which is the BOMA, talking about this further. There'll be another committee meeting in November where we're trying to get Ken, Micah, Matthew, Kirk and I directive from you because the plan at the moment is to have the first reading of an ordinance, if you wanna go this route, a first reading of an ordinance in January at the moment meeting and a public hearing and the second reading in February. So that is the timeline on this. There's, there's a decent amount of time, but we, we need some direction tonight and really a lot more direction in November, and I'm hoping this is a primer. And again, I, I keep saying there's not much commentary, but as a reminder, you had Chad here mm -hmm. when we first started talking about this, and it's alluded to by Andrew, the time frame is what it is largely because of the implications it has in terms of getting material out to voters you know, just a number of things the electoral office has to go through as well. So that's why we have, yeah, you know, it's a fair amount of time, not an inordinate amount. I think the driver was, as I recall, maybe over into May. Yes. But that's I think right. that was the farthest time period. So I think we were, we're looking at February and March. Voter registration cards go out later in February. Yep. So trying to be respectful of yep. that so that Thompson Station doesn't get two sets right. and create confusion. Yep. Um, the only other thing I'll point out real quick, and this is not necessarily a Matthew question, but though I know he has input on it. If you were to go two wards, you would be picking which one would be up in different years because you're going to stagger it most likely. We need to. Um, if you went four wards, you'd be picking two of the wards to be up in one of the even years, 22, 24, et cetera. And the other two would go in the alternating years. So geographically, that matters where someone lives and what year would be eligible. Obviously, as it stands right now, um, Alderman uh, Stover and Alderman Zinn Law does not allow you to uh, adjust. Um, the law does not allow you to adjust any elected official's term, so it would be after your term, but that is, that's a consideration geographically. Hey, I have a quick question. So the work session, I, this is 
good open conversation. What's the purpose of item number six on the agenda at the voting meeting? So that would be you actually, sorry, uh, breaking into a committee to actually deliberate this issue and give town staff directive on what you're looking for. Again, there'll be another committee meeting in November. We're looking for those meetings to give us directive on what the ordinance needs to look like. It'll inform Matthew on what the map needs to look like. Those types of things. The work session's mostly for your information and then full on deliberation can start happening. Uh, because if you recall, uh, I believe it was a couple months ago, y'all passed a resolution to form the redistricting committee and you designated the BOMA as the yeah. redistricting committee. So instead of having it on a different night, we just put it on the BOMA agenda for it's, efficiency. It's complying statutorily with what's required, plus you're gonna end up making a recommendation to the body. Correct. Uh, thank you. Does anybody have any guidance on what you'd like to see? I have uh, some questions. So I, uh, yeah. In terms of just, I don't know how far out or maybe just the entire state, but of towns that are, what's the, what's the population number? 70, 70, our population number 72? Uh, it's. What'd you say it was? 75, 75, I thought it was 72 and changed. But, yeah, so, 7,485. Okay, 7,485. So towns relative to that size, are all of them using, or most of them using award system? It's kind of a mixture. Okay. I will tell you that there's um, at large and their are awards, yeah. Are you able to, do you have data like that you can pull up? I see you got a big spreadsheet of. I don't have which ones are at large or have awards right now. No, I don't have a big spreadsheet of that. I do know several cities that we are doing are, um, yeah, do have all those cities. I know it's probably hard to see, but um, most of them, White House, Hendersonville, Gallatin, Franklin, Farragut, Columbia, Cleveland, Tennessee, Clarksville, Chattanooga, they all do have, have wards, but I do not have a, a so, And those are all significantly larger populations. They are, yes. Yeah. More like a, not quite Spring Hill, but it's up to the right? Or is it a work session? Well, in the work session, that's a good question. It's informal. I yeah, mean, it's up to y'all. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, what the mayor was saying at the end of it, after they get through all their questions, he was going to allow time. Oh, go ahead, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, do you want me to just state what I'm thinking about all this right now? Is that what we're doing? Or are we waiting until the meeting, the voting meeting to do that? It's, it's your workshop, however y'all want to proceed. Okay. Uh, it was just a, a brief overview. We talked about the fact that um, you could do something. You didn't have to do anything. I guess that kind of gets us to where we are. And then with the in Tennessee, with regard to how your charter and structure is orientated, there's some options ruled in or ruled out as it relates to potentially at large, as I understand that, that's not an option for us. Um, so if you see those kind of things in other places, it's, you know, how they're um, comprised, statutorily, charter, and otherwise. So we talked just very briefly about that and some overarching comments. And I, I think that was the first thing that got us to where we are. Yeah, to change or not change. Or to change. Or to change. Or to change. <laughs> two, two or four wards and four wards and had two or four to be the same size. Those are the types of questions kind of at the forefront of what we do. I don't want to just see this as a question I'm talking about. They like the local folks. I don't do a lot of folks support it. Like the idea of war, where's the more like step with war, few folks in the rural area, they like it. It's just a makeup of how we it's just how we implement that type of structure to that's the question. And I do think and, and I really appreciate Matthew, it's um to be able to have it with uh, eighteen hundred and twenty-one 
per um, each of the proposed four areas. That's, um, that's not always easy. I will say this is easier here in Tennessee, and again, having to have done it elsewhere in Virginia when perhaps it wasn't quite as homogeneous of a population, and you had different classes to consider, and all of those things. Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on one's perspective, it is what it is here, and it's made it less complicated in terms of the, uh, the census block and trying to make those considerations work. Can you verify for me that we are not allowed to have, based on the way our town is set up, any at-large that is seats, my correct? Yeah, I, I, I've been looking into that, and you know, I think the first thing that people see, I've talked to a couple, is, well, Franklin has warded an at-large alderman. They have a private act charter. They went to the legislature and got it amended to do that a number of years ago. We are a public act charter. We're locked in to what the legislature created for a board of mayor and aldermen. So right now, we're one ward. All five are elected at large, effectively, the mayor and four aldermen. If you created wards, it would be for the aldermen. The mayor is always at large. And, you know, if you went with two, you'd probably be looking at two aldermen per ward if you're going to keep the same makeup of the body. If you went with four, it'd be one alderman per ward. If you go more than that, you're adding seats to the BOMA. Um, and I think there's obviously pros and cons to that, and people can relay their opinion on that. But if you're keeping the same makeup, I think you're limited to keeping it status quo, two wards with two aldermen each, or four wards with one alderman each. They are always being at large in all of those scenarios. So we can't do the mixture, so just I wanted to take that off the table. I'm still looking at it, I, but I, I really don't think it, we're going to be able to do that. So have we gone through this? This, this proposal has been drafted by... This was... Go done ahead. by us and Andrew, we sat down just kind of kicking the tires, looked at the way the census blocks laid out and grouped those communities of, of interest in those subdivisions together. So, for instance, on this particular map, District 2 encompasses all of Tollgate and a little bit of the east side of um, this 31 here. District 4 makes up a majority of the, the cloister. However, we did have to split it to create that District 1. And District 3 comes down, and that right there, with it, which is uh, Bridgemore subdivision, creates um, Bridgemore and Tollgate are almost perfect uh, from a deviation standpoint and a total population standpoint. Uh, Canterbury is a little bit larger, so based off the current four wards right now, you would have to split them somewhere um, based off the current makeup. What's the, what's the purpose of dividing the town into four wards? Historically, redistricting efforts are for um, people's representation. I, I mentioned Thompson Station's a little more homogeneous. There are not a lot of varying protected citizenry classes, things of that nature. But, you know, I think that drove a lot of the um, redistricting, at least in the early years, with these efforts. When you, I think that maybe y'all's experience is the same as mine here, but the most common thing you hear about when you go knocking on doors is, is that, do you live in a neighborhood, one of those three, or do you live in the rural area? So that seems to be the, I don't want to call it a divide because I don't feel like our town's that divided, but... That seems like where you're drawing the line, not necessarily for protected class right. or anything like that. This doesn't do that, in my opinion. And, and lumping in part of Canterbury in with uh, what you're calling Ward 1, which is west side of town, that's not, to me, that's not accomplishing any goal, if that's your goal, is to divide the town into groups of, you got one person who's living in Tollgate who represents that ward, and somebody who lives in Bridgemore represents that ward. Well, to me, that doesn't do it, in my opinion. Well, we, in the process of two wards, we have one like that. What did that look like? Right. I want that to like a one, two, and three, four will end up kind of 
you could do a combination of that, yes. Uh, but you would have a little bit more liberty, and we could, you know, when we're doing this, we're actually moving census blocks. So as you can see, I mean, just in uh, just in Canterbury alone, you know, there's probably I don't know 10, 15 census blocks just right here. So you can, you know, when you're doing this, you can um, move these census blocks over to one ward or the other. We've got a couple of neighbor significantly sized neighborhoods that are in the in the works right now. How are those taken into account? The, so when you do this, you're taking a snapshot of what, uh, what the census, yeah, the gals, yeah. Well, yeah, it was the 2020 census. So Littleberry, Pleasant Creek, all of those with Rod no Roderick. Yeah, all that stuff, whistle stop. Yeah, yeah understand it's all it's every ten years. Yeah, so exactly. this is See, and this is where this is where I struggle with a lot of this because it, it you know this might have been a good idea at the census point in time and well a good idea is a loose term, but uh, this is gonna change drastically over the next few years. Wait till the sewer plant comes online. This is really gonna change. So Right, and, and you, you can't have future considerations, so that that, that is a difficulty. Um, what what options does this committee have um, in terms of so we make policy or can we defer to a referendum on the creation of wards? I don't believe you can. It's not one of the the, the limited referendum items, but we'll double check it for you. I would say from a practical standpoint, timing wise, I don't know that. You know, that's going to pretty much rule that out. Well, I think making the right decision is better than making a fast decision. No, nobody's disagreeing. I'm just trying to make sure everybody knows the right information yeah, when I mean, a question's asked. We, we may be able to have a different answer, as Andrew's saying, he'll check it. But being able to check it and do it with the allotted amount of time are two different questions. Sure. Is there going to be any kind of study or anything presented as far as to, to the committee? I mean, I've seen, I've seen studies that are done, you know, like it's sort of like a governmental study where you look at some of the questions I would ask, like how many towns relative to our size, or how many, you know, how many of them have adopted a ward uh, system, how many have rejected a ward system, uh, what kind of options does the committee have in terms of, like I just asked, whether we make policy or can we defer to a referendum? I feel like that's a lot of documentation that could be handed out that would help you know, comprehensively look at what choices do we have and maybe help people who also are curious, uh, you know, what kind of, I don't know what your point is. You would have more buy-in in the public input in the public participation of this. On how, on how you divide the words? Right now, the perception is, is three subdivisions control everything the council station does. That's the perception. It may not be that but this group here, here, right there, they feel like that y'all could give a flip less of that to And so you're from a southern division, right? I am. You're from all of y'all are from We're from the we're from the same subdivision. Okay, hold on, hold on. If you really want the public body. And I used to be on the planning commission because I supported the wrong person for mayor. <laughs> but uh, you get a better buy-in like this right here. You're going to have these people that are going to say, hey, we've got a representation. Right now, the perception is we don't. Well, the point you just made with that, where you just pointed, if you're looking at the east side of town, that doesn't change. You still get represented by somebody in Canterbury. You see what I mean? I'm sympathetic to what you're talking about, but this doesn't, this doesn't, that's the point I'm trying to make. If you want to put half a Canterbury in with Ward 1, which is the west side of town, which in my opinion is, is probably the most different part of our town, this doesn't solve that. And to your point, it doesn't help anybody who lives over by Lewisburg or I south of it. I know what the answer is, and I know that I like this. This is the first thing I've seen about Ward 1. Now, your concern is Canterbury? Well, I don't know. Put Canterbury in Ward 1 and go with Ward 4. Well, the challenge is it has to go by population. Population? So, yeah. Are we going to do four wards? Well, that's the discussion we're having. That's, I mean, so that's another question I have. 
as part of the, like this study that I'm asking for, a, co a comprehensive look at like what does Tennessee law allow for us to do based on our charter and whatever authority we have as a, com a committee to do this. How many wards can we do? How many seats can we add or take away? Or um, all that kind of all that kind of information in a comprehensive format would be very helpful. Well, that goes back to the question of do we do four wards, two at large? That goes back to what mm -hmm. I guess you're looking at. To yeah, see if, if you could do that. If you can do it large, and then maybe you look at doing six wards. Six wards, right? I, I believe the maximum is eight. I've looked at it before. Um, I think you, the maximum you're allowed to do as a BOMA form of government is eight wards. Um, so you'd be limited to eight aldermen and one mayor uh, if you went to that many wards. Um, if you did six wards, the minimum's one alderman per ward, so you'd be at seven on the board, one mayor, six aldermen, and obviously you're- We'd have to buy another table. Five currently. We'd be on a table, so. The thing, you know, what, what you've been discussing though is, I'm sorry. Is there a minimum population census well, you, you, you have to evenly divide it, and I'll let Matthew get into that more, but, you know, you're asking what are the options. It's... Nominators. Yes. Yeah, so we, we have to be, if we're going four wards, it's 1821, whatever half of 74, 85 is, would be if you went two wards and you just keep dividing down from there. And all those numbers, you would just have to combine to get to that ward number to be close. I can't, Matthew, what the deviation is, I think it's definitely within 10%, but. Um, yeah, and I, and I do want to clarify, I did misspeak earlier. I think I said 1821. It's 1871 based off of the four, um, the four wards. I think I said 21, just to clarify. It's seven. What is it, 1871 times four? 1871 yeah. times four. It's actually 1871.25 times four. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we yeah. can't. Yeah. That's, the, that's, the minimum, that, that's the minimum size. That's why I couldn't get the math right. That's there. that's based no, off that's of just, the that's four the that size. you've got right now. Yep. Is there obviously you add you go up to that seven or eight? I mean, you're the the ideal population will start to drop. Yep. Then you're probably looking around you know nine hundred or a thousand. Yeah, I think it's nine thirty five if you went with uh, eight wards. So about. Just a little under a thousand per. Do you do you think that you potentially keep people from seeking office if you have one person representing a significant portion of the town like that? I think it encourages people to run. I don't know that that's how history tells it, but that's the sentiment that I I hear. I mean, I've had several folks from Tollgate reach out. They they would be more encouraged to run in that geographical area. I mean, whether the three of us like it or not what this gentleman said, everyone thinks Canterbury runs what's going on. We all live in the same subdivision. But you can, you can take electronic voter data by polling location and show that Canterbury didn't go and like browbeat the rest of the town into no. voting. A, a no. lot of my votes came from the Tollgate uh, precinct, not from the Canterbury precinct. And same thing in Bridgeport. We, so, could, all, yeah, we could all say that. I mean, we, yeah, we that's, were well-rounded. That's, that's yeah. I, I didn't look at yours. I'm just looking. I only looked at mine. Yeah. So, that's not necessarily, that's, if somebody wants to run in Tollgate right now, they're, they're not, they're, there's nothing keeping them from running. But, you know, if, if Alderman Bell had three more years in a term, that would keep somebody else from running. So, and that's seriously something to consider. If you're, if you're at large, anybody in the town can run. He, I, I think you have to, you have to call. I can't do that. Uh, oh, he, he has to call. He has to uh, call. Clarifying question. This is only based on the 10-year census because we've got all cycle census given our obvious trajectory of the road. Yeah, you, you can do those special census calculations for the purposes of distribution of sales tax, but not redistricting in terms of voting population. And I believe you can only do three. Two, two, uh, two, two or three two in 10 years. Between, yeah. yeah. So next time, 2030, all those new numbers right. would be reflected. So any decisions yes. we would make this year is basically what we're saying. So. Mm -hmm. Except again for the special census, to Sean's point, you know, with all the subdivisions coming in, you're not going to want to wait 10 years to do wait, one of those. Yeah. What's stopping, yeah, what's stopping that from? You know, two more neighborhoods ending up with the same exact one in the 
decide now. Well, well, that's but that's, it's already gonna, that's already going to happen in Ward Four. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The issue in between that you run into is uh, the Census Bureau used to do a what they call a fee split block program. What they're really looking for to actually accomplish redistricting is going to be that fine-grained, detailed information on those census blocks. And just because, you know, a subdivision comes in, they're going to want to know, you know, for, for a population standpoint, they're going to want to know, hey, is there 800 people in this subdivision now? That's the type of thing that you're looking at. And that's why it's usually done on, a, on that every 10-year cycle, since this is really the best thing that we have right now as far as those counts. There's a question. Actually, I have a couple of questions. Um, do we know the population of the three major subdivisions to break down? We do. Like what is total people in the three or what's in America? Yeah, I'll give it to you in just a second. So Tolgate has 1,822 people. Almost exactly one ward. Yes, pretty much. Canterbury has 2,160. And you might have to help me here, Andrew. Is this all of Canterbury, I believe? That's Bridgemore. Is that? Well, that's Bridgemore. That's Bridgemore. Bridgemore. And, I'm sorry, Bridgemore. And that, Pecan Hill. Yeah, I believe that's that. That's correct. That's Pecan Hill, too. But same thing. Same. And based off of this, Bridgemore would be 1,702 people. Yeah, I think that's right. I believe that's wrong. Because I live there, there's like 400 some houses, and there's more than two people in every house. But anyway, that's immaterial, I guess. Um, but the other question is is this redistricting only for? You know, voting for the all in that it has nothing to do with state elections, federal elections. The redistricting, right. you know, they're going to do for that. Yeah, that, that yes, yeah, that, that will get released in January. The House, Senate, but it, yeah, it wouldn't have anything to do with this. Yeah. So I'll just give you a number. I mean, right here. So based off of those three subdivisions. And the remainder of what's not in those three subdivisions would be 1,801. That is what is left over that does not reside in Tollgate, Canterbury, or Bridgemore. So I guess, Matt? It's not only the West. There's some, yeah, on the east side of... That's it, yeah, the yeah. remainder of east and west. East, west, and then you have, there's a couple of subdivisions down uh, Station uh, station South and Village Drive and Co uh, Country Haven, and there's some other little neighborhoods down there that... Uh, so I guess, those. Matthew, just for informative purposes, um, what you just showed right here, if you did strictly the subdivision as wards, and then have the remainder of the property as, say, the, the fourth ward, the leftover ward, what would be the problem in doing that? I think the issue that you made that you would probably run into is it wouldn't be contiguous. Uh, I think that would be the main issue you're going to have. So, I mean, it's all touching, but so, it's something to think about for people who are concerned about um, representation. If if you had somebody like we've got an alderman who lives in Tollgate, suddenly that that alderman is not held accountable to the to the electorate at large. He's held accountable to the electorate in Tollgate. So it, it it sort of exacerbates your problem, in my opinion. Right now, we've got four aldermen that are accountable to the entire population of Thompson Station. I happen to live in a subdivision, but I've, I've spent more time on front doors in the blue than I have in the red.
I understand, I understand. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying my, my opinion is that exacerbates your problem because now whoever's in one two in the colored areas, not the blue, now longer no longer is held accountable by the rest of the population. So, so we all want to we're, we're the committee. That the, that we're, I'm looking at the council, we're the committee. You, well, the, the committee's going to make a recommendation. Um, to do this, you would have to pass an ordinance. So earlier we were talking about tonight, November committee meeting. But you know, if this were to continue, if that's the will of of, of the committee and really the BOMA, uh, the BOMA would be passing a, an ordinance on first reading, public hearing, second reading at January and February. Again, rough timeline, but the the, the BOMA is the ultimate decider on what the districts are. It is not, I looked it up while, while we were talking earlier, it, there's only about 10 things that a municipality in Tennessee can have a referendum on. This is not one of them. It's specifically delegated to the governing body. So the BOMA decides to do wards or not. Do they, can they redraw the lines, so to speak? You know, the way that, you know, just the way that is, can they take they have a they have a term for that. <laughs> Does anybody know what it's called? Well, Somebody's going to say it. I don't know who. I, that's a question I have. Who draws the line? It, we, I guess we do, we but do. We, ha we have to have it legally we by four, and it also has to be. What if tables. we disagree? It's like everything else. It comes down to the vote. We have our version of squid games. We're not allowed to do that. Uh, you're all worried about that about six. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Do you want to? You want the ideal number? Is that your? Is that what you're asking? Well, you're the one making the recommendation. It puts it into twelve hundred, well, roughly twelve hundred and fifty people. Pardon? So it's roughly twelve hundred and fifty right. people. So you get two thirds of every subdivision uh, carved out into a. Yeah, so based on, if, if it went to six, each each ward would need to be 1,248. 1, 2.7.5. Well, that's, I mean, there's a million possibilities that we could do on that. Yeah, if I it, mean, it's, you're, I mean, it's, you're back to having to keep the census blocks yes, I mean, connected and so on. That's, yeah. that's what makes it so difficult. You got to add all the numbers you see on the screen, the, the, the 12s, the 105s, too close to that number, keep it together, there's a ward. Move to the next section. So I don't know how well you can actually see, but down here in the red and the blue, it will actually tell you the amount that that district needs to lose. So based off the six right now, for instance, Bridgemore, make sure I'm telling you right, this one down here, the one, it would need to lose 454 people. Um, Tollgate would need to lose 574 people. And then Canterbury would need to lose 912 people. That's based off the six, based off the way it's you know, drawn. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do, yes. You cannot split a census block, you have to, yes. What I think what I mean is they have to be contiguous. They do have to be yeah, compact and contiguous, yes. Which presents a problem with everything that's in blue here, basically. So, so if I may, Alderman and, and Mayor, for example, and then this is the type of directive I think we were looking for, uh, I think there's obviously a, a seminal question of, do you want to do this or not? It may be premature to fully decide that, but uh, if, assuming you did for a moment want to at least entertain the idea, uh, as, as Mr. Gordon pointed out, okay, let's look at six wards. Well, there's a number of ways to do that. If you directed staff to come up with eight versions of different ways you put it together of six wards, I think we could probably do that in four weeks. Bring that back to you and you can look at them. I mean, that's the type of thing, you're not making a decision today. It's what would you like to see? You may not see it all tonight. We may have to bring stuff back to you. Or conversely, and again, not trying to, as we said at the onset of this, this is your decision. We're not trying to drive it any way, shape, or form. 
but if it looks as though there is not the uh, predisposition for it, we certainly don't want to put the comptroller's office in Matthew through eight different gyrations of this either. So uh, as you said, that is the seminal question. Is there a majority, um, at least of those present, that want to proceed or not? I think and depending we need to see on some that, varying options as to what can be done. Right. I mean, I think this is a start, but I think there's other avenues that we can go to improve upon it and see where we're at. I mean, I know you answered the question, but Franklin simply seems to have a different type of charter than what That's anybody right. else does. We probably can't do that. So we need to kind of look and see what our other options are as far as using the term, but dividing up the the wards and the communities because I mean in essence it sounds like you're dividing up the town, but you're actually gaining representation in that renter. But the way it looks right now is a little it's hard to understand because that big sector of section of the green is probably for the most part the original part of Tollgate with a little bit or I'm sorry of Thompson Station with a little bit over to the east as well. And I always said, it can't be rural versus subdivisions. It can't be. It's got to be a collective unit of everybody. And everybody's got to have the same voice and do that. So I would rather see us do this correctly, to your point. I'd rather us do our due diligence and do it the right way than make a hache decision. And we dive into this and ask more questions. So I've, I've got a list of, I would love to see a, a, like a report. I would like to see like some sort of deliverable, a report, almost like you give us in our packets with a staff report. Um, and I can give you, not here, but after this meeting, I could give you some things that I'm specifically looking for, but a lot of them are what we've discussed. Four, two, four, or six, what kind of legal options do we have? You've, you've talked about some of them, but putting them in a comprehensive paper that everyone else also can read who's not necessarily sitting at this meeting. Um, but I can send you, I've, I've read through a couple of them in preparation for this just to see what other other entities are doing while they're deliberating this. And a big one for me is just, you know, we've got 7,500 people. How many towns in Tennessee are like that? How many have accepted or, or rejected the ward or redistricting system? Uh, you know, just there's lots of questions, and I just, you know, it'd be good to just sort of look at what our peers are doing, not necessarily because we want to be that. By now like, and at what population threshold you go from four aldermen to six aldermen? Yeah. And I would like to also suggest our next discussion not be at a workshop, this be a separate workshop all to itself. I think it it deserves the time and effort that we deserve to be, you know, if it's a special like call. A, like a special meeting where a we special can, call meeting of some sort where it's, it's we, the topic. We give public notice, people can come in and give their input. Yeah. And I appreciate everyone that's come out tonight, but I just I don't think we're doing the, the service within an hour make these decisions. I think it's a, a long, deliberative process that we have to talk through and get some input. That's all I got. So with, uh, I mean, that's all, the, that's all that I would have asked in conclusion to all this. I don't know, do I have to ask for the same thing during the meeting? At uh, but yeah, this is a workshop, so we're not voting here. So whatever the direction and consensus of a majority of you are at that point, so we have it on record. I mean, certainly we hear and we understand. It doesn't have to be this long-winded when we get to that item. Okay. It's just... Uh, Understood. It's compliant. It's, uh, I yes. Understand. I understand. Got it. I, I would like to say, though, again, too, because the question that was asked, it does not mean necessarily in perpetuity that some form of modification charter or otherwise can't be considered. I don't know what the likelihood would be, but as was said earlier, that's how Franklin went through the process. It's now availed itself of with that, with that large representation. Now, I will say this, I've had in Virginia seven individuals, five wards and two at large. And the comment that was made earlier about, well, I represent this ward. I used to hear that all the time from the five individual 
ward members, and then if the two at large were always trying to figure out how to make it work with everybody looking at their specific ward and the interest of the people that lived in the ward. Sometimes it worked well. Yep. Sometimes it did not work as well. That's, so, that's the point I was making. I, I understand. Yeah. So I'm just saying, while Franklin has done that, I, I don't think this staff, or certainly not me, I'm not going to give you a recommendation as to what works or doesn't because it's all a matter of the community and perception. Some people think that works exceedingly well. Others don't. It depends on the person, I guess, in that ward and how they feel about the decisions that were made or not made. So, you know, some of those things can be answered, but then it goes back to what I said at the beginning of the workshop. At the, at the end of the day, it's really the perception of you folks and how you feel about this. We'll try to help get more info, but it's part of the system. Unfortunately, I guess, was designed with a lot of philosophical underpinnings and leanings, and it all comes home to how each of you individually see, feel, perceive, or whatever, and then ultimately vote. We'll take a recess before the board meeting starts. Before that would be great. Take a break. <laughs> That would be great. <laughs> All right, let's do that. We'll adjourn for the 7 o'clock for a short break.